Chemical evidence is sent to crime laboratories across the country every single day, mostly due to drug cases. With a high volume of samples to work through, laboratory turnaround times and costs continue to increase. As a result, cases may not be prosecuted in a timely manner, and this clogs up the criminal justice system. But properly applied field drug kit testing and system-wide protocols can streamline these aspects of drug investigation. Colorimetric kits are the most commonly used presumptive or screening field tests for detecting control substances at the scene. They are inexpensive, easy to use, and field portable, allowing investigators to quickly narrow down types of substances and the number of samples requiring lab confirmation. Colorimetric tests are designed for presumptive use only, meaning the substance is thought to be detected but still must be confirmed by laboratory tests. When selecting any field test kit, agencies must ensure the type of kit they select meets important criteria. Kits must test sufficient specificity, meaning the kit is targeted enough to identify particular chemical compounds of interest. This minimizes false positive or false negative interpretations. They also must be adequately sensitive to allow the detection of drugs at concentrations commonly found in street samples. Drugs are often mixed with a variety of adulterants. The test must be able to detect the drug in mixtures. Results must be reproducible. Here's NFSTC forensic chemist Kirk Grates to demonstrate how these tests are conducted. Today we're going to go ahead and start talking about color metric technology, uh, specifically when it comes to looking for particular drugs that are in the field. Um, these type of kits are actually utilized by officers. Suspected substances are um, actually gathered in the field and they resemble drugs. They can actually util utilize these colorimetric test kits to look for cocaine, uh, marijuana, uh, PCP, and other drugs out there. But the particular kit that we're going to utilize to um, presumptively identify cocaine is going to be the Scott's Modified uh, Reagent. This kit is a three component system. Uh, basically, you just open up the pouch, grab the, uh, the actual unknown sample, remove the top, take a very small portion of the material, place it into the pouch. Another thing you want to be careful of too, there's a static charge on some of the pouch as well as the drug. As you can see, it's actually starting to move up the straw a little bit. You want to be very careful, making sure that you get all the sample into the pouch itself. Another thing you want to be aware of is don't use too much. Uh, you want to definitely keep in within the manufacturer's recommended amount. Uh, also, recap the sample. You want to avoid contamination as well. Make sure you actually tap the sample down into the bottom of the actual test kit itself so it does come in contact with the reagents. Go ahead and close the pouch. Clasp, clasp it with the actual clamp. And keep tapping just to make sure that our sample does get to the bottom. Now again, you notice I did not overload the test kit. It's very important that we do not do that. It doesn't require very much. All right, starting from left to right, we go ahead and break the first ampule and let the reagent um, go ahead and exit that ampule. You don't have to continue to crush. And you just shake it for about five seconds just to ensure that our sample mixes with our reagent. All right, and we move on to the second reagent. And that should turn pink in the presence of cocaine base or cocaine hydro, uh, hydrochloride. And again, we're going to wait about five seconds or so while we're shaking just to make sure we get a uh, really good contact with that reagent. And the third step, or the third reagent, we're going to go ahead and break that and shake for, again, five seconds. And if there is uh, cocaine hydrochloride or cocaine base present, we should get that characteristic pink over blue. And as you can see here, uh, we got the pink over blue. Now the pink is going to be our aqueous layer, organic layer is going to be our blue. Uh, being that it is pink over blue, we do have probable cause for our unknown sample. Uh, therefore, the officer in the field utilizing this particular kit could then um, detain the individual. Uh, this uh, sample, however, would then have to be submitted to a forensic laboratory, in this case a forensic drug laboratory for confirmation. All right, one thing we get to be mindful of when we're utilizing these kits in the field is they do have an expiration date. So we want to make sure we utilize them before the end of that expiration date. We want to check the lot numbers. Uh, it also would be a good idea um, that you actually run a control, actually having known samples to ensure that these are working correctly. Uh, another factor, too, is environmental conditions. If these are stored in a patrol car, 
uh, for any length of time where there's extreme heat or cold, they can actually affect the reagents when it comes to their sensitivity. Okay, We may or may not be able to detect some of the things that are present, uh, or you might get some false positives due to the expiration and or the environmental conditions that these reagents were exposed to. For colorimetric tests in particular, there are limitations. The tests require a very small sample. Overloading may cause errors. These tests are for dry samples and liquid should not be added. Timing is crucial to ensure the most accurate results. If the sample is read too soon or too long after processing, a false negative or false positive could result. Another limitation is color interpretation. Results are read by looking at the kit's color and comparing it to a chart. This comparison can be subjective or influenced by color vision issues. A field testing program will be most successful with good structure, including competency training, quality assurance, regular refresher training, and program coordination between all departments within the system. Many agencies have implemented a Field Investigation Drug Officer Program, or FIDO, to ensure every step is properly applied. An officer's knowledge, training, and experience, coupled with a well-established partnership with the Forensic Laboratory, are imperative for a successful field testing program to streamline drug cases and ensure proper use of presumptive test results.